Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from John, AA8SO. And very simple question. Any thoughts about CW decoding software or hardware? Uh, yes, I do have thoughts about it. Um, the short answer to this is that it's very hard to do to do decoding of hand-sent CW in a noisy environment. And I know that because that is what I wrote my master's thesis on. It's called uh, Morse Code Revisited, an examination of the use of matched filters in an automatic Morse code receiver. And uh, this is my master's degree thesis. and. I did a lot of computer simulations on that. That was back in the days of the Radio Shack Model 1. And since it took so long to do one iteration, um, I had to connect it up to a buzzer so that if it's finished in the middle of the night, I could get up and start the next one over again. Uh, it <laughs> That was a long time ago when we were dealing with a lot less technology in the home than we have today. That poor old Radio Shack Model 1 um, was not a very powerful uh, device made with a Z80 chip. I mean, it was really cool for the time, but uh, and it cost me a grand uh, to buy the thing. Shoot, you can buy just about any computer with a monitor today for that. So, in any event, does machine decoding of Morse code work? The answer is not very well. If the code is sent by a machine or a computer and has perfect timing, then yes, it will work. However, I point out here that although a lot of people, including the American Radio Relay League, try to say that CW is a digital mode, it is not. It's very much an analog mode. Yes, it is true. It is either on or off. However, it's a human being doing the spacing, and the spacing is not exact when sent by a human being unless you are sending it with the keyer or a, a computer keyboard attached to a keyer, in which case the spacing is uh, perfect. Now, I know that when I send Morse code, I timed this out by doing some stuff on the oscilloscope, that uh, my dashes are about six times longer than my dots. So I've got real short dots. It's supposed to be three times. So if you've got a machine that's trying to discern between a dot and a dash, it can really be a problem. Another thing that is a problem is that a lot of people, including me, put extra space between characters and words. The official Morse code timing for that is that uh, between dits and da's, there's a dit worth of space. And between uh, letters, there's a da worth of space. Well, that means steady, sending the code at a very steady uh, rate. Uh, humans don't do that. They tend to send the characters and then put a little extra uh, space in there. And it confuses the machine. So if the machine receives dit, is that an E? Or is that a T? You only know if you know the speed at which the Morse code is being sent. Now, if you hear a longer letter, like did it it, it's S, okay? And da, da, da is O, but remember the inter-element space is only a dit worth. So it's, it's easy if you've got ears listening, a da, da, da has very little space in between the elements, whereas dit, dit, dit has the same space and it's the same size as the elements. That's really weird, but the, the net of it is that CW is an analog mode because it is sent by human beings who use analog real world timing. No human sends perfect Morse code unless you're using a keyboard or something like that that will space out the characters exactly. Now, on my old radio up there, that is my uh, Yesu FTDX3000 right here. 
this very fine radio. It's not an entry level radio. And um, it will attempt machine decoding of Morse code. It's got pretty cool in there. This old Tentec uh, with the updated mod in it will uh, also do attempt a decoding of Morse code. This ancient FT-101B from Yesu is too ancient to have anything in it, any computer or anything like that that would even attempt uh, to do Morse code, but these two do try. Now the Yesu, not Yesu, ICOM, this is the um, reference station radio is the ICOM 7300 and this does not have a Morse code decoder in it that I've been able to find so you have to do it by listening okay so that's that's Morse code coming through its narrowest filter the key is this <clears throat> When Morse code was first designed um, under the direction of Samuel F. B. Morse, uh, it was actually developed by one of his assistants who took care of the details, but since he worked for hire for Mr. Morse, uh, Mr. Morse takes the credit for it. But the genius in the original Morse code was this. In the early electric telegraphs, there were some of the early electric telegraphs, there were actually 26 wires, one for each letter. And you'd get a light or something depending on which one was actually pressed. And uh, there was also a certain galvanometer type things uh, used in England where you'd get a vein that would point to the right letter. Morse code's genius, what it did that had not been done before on any scale was to use simply uh, the dot and the dash. Actually Morse code used um, a dot, a dash, and uh, some different kinds of spacings to do different things. Uh, for example, the old Morse code uh, used by telegraphers in the railroad era for an ampersand is dit, 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 which we use today as a shortcut for the word and, uh, which the ampersand was used in formal communication back then. Uh, so the genius was two different code elements. So you only needed one line. And what would happen in the Morse is that a pen would come down on the paper and mark when there was a closed connection and go up when there was no connection and it would actually write it out on a paper tape and then the operator would come back and decipher that write it down well operators soon learned that the machine made a particular rhythmic noise and if it uh, you know it would go click when it came down and a slightly different kind of click when it went up and they would hear all of these clicks and could determine by their ears what was being sent and this could be done on over only one wire they used earth return at the time uh, later they went to a balanced line but uh, uh, that was quite a bit later so um, the thing about that was it was cheap to string one wire the sending and receiving apparatus was fairly simple because at the time it was a key and a sounder now a sounder just did click on closing the circuit and a click. So an S would be click, 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 click. Okay. An O would be click, 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 <laughs> and then back. Um, and I have never learned to uh, hear Morse code that way. Now, the idea of using Morse code as a uh, sound was uh, something that came up from uh, the original um, spark. You could hear in the radio a spark, a bzzz, like that, bzzz, and that could be used to send the code. After a while, they used tubes to make, instead of spark type waves, make continuous waves, which had a very pure note like you hear on the air today. Okay? 
Now the problem with machine decoding is that it just has a very, very hard time following the timing. It's very difficult if it gets one letter, um, you know, if there's a, a slight spacing discrepancy in the letter, did it, did it like that, is that an S or a U or what is it? Uh, the human operator can tell from context or if he's very used to listening to the, the way the FAR operator sends, in other words, the FAR operator's so-called fist, uh, then that can be decoded very easily. So Morse code was designed for wetware to send to wetware, okay, uh, after they got rid of the tape and just did the sounder and uh, you uh, uh, the um, sounders are available on the antique market and I've heard people who've put these back together just to play with them by the way the Morse code used on the railroad is different than the Morse code used on radio and radio we use what is a derivative of the German code um, and and so you don't have weird spacings in the letters like the old uh, American railroad code uh, used to use. So the bottom line is that there are no good machine decoders of Morse code. If the Morse is sent like from a computer keyboard or something like that where you get a very steady stream of beautifully shaped code. Yes, yes, you can do a pretty good job of decoding that, although not in noise. Okay, so the bottom line to your question is, any thoughts about CW decoding software or hardware is that it has not gotten to the point where it's useful. Now, there are uh, things like reverse beacon network and so on that do attempt to decode. If you send your call sign really, really carefully, it will pick it up. Uh, the uh, other thing that's on the horizon, if somebody wants to put their mind to this, is there's no money in it, so I don't know if anybody will, but artificial intelligence can take a human-sent Morse code stream and uh, pull out of it uh, the intelligence that was intended to be in there. And I look forward to somebody doing that. Maybe you're working on that right now. If you are, bring your product to market, put an article in QST and, and in CQ, and let's see what we can do. But there, there you have it. It's a complex topic. I got my master's thesis uh, based on that, and uh, I can tell you that it's a very hard thing to do. So there you have it. Please also check out Patreon. Uh, the uh, URL is shown below at www.patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash K-E-0-O-G. We'll take you right to Patreon. And until we next meet, 73.